Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Generalized Linear Capacitor Charging Discharging Process. There is another video related to this one which discusses the charging and discharging of nonlinear capacitor. And here is the link to this video. And I'm going to print the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching. I'm showing here two seemingly different charging or discharging processes. One is a voltage source which is charging or discharging a capacitor. Could be of any value here the voltage and the capacitor could be either with a voltage of zero or charged to a given voltage. And then we have here a case in which one capacitor is charging or discharging another capacitor. Each one of them can be of course of any voltage value. Now these seem to be like two different processes. In this case we have the energy lost in this process to be equal to CV, which is the final value of the capacitor since we are assuming a complete charging, CV square over two. And on this side, we see that this is similar, but here we have the two capacitor actually expressed here like they've been in series. So this is this total capacitance in series times the difference between the voltages square over two. As we'll see in this video, these two processes are actually the same, as can be judged from the generalized model that I'm going to present here. So let me start off, first of all, with the basic relationship for the fundamental case in which you have a voltage source charging a capacitor. And I'm showing here the parasitic resistances, or it could be a resistor that you put in, in any circuit, of course, will have some resistance. There are some resistance in the line if you don't put in a resistor. And in the source, if it's a battery, and actually there is an ESR of the capacitor. So there is always some resistance. There is a theoretical question, what is happening if this resistance goes down to zero? I'm not discussing this issue in this presentation. So in this case, what we're going to see is, of course, the current will start off with the maximum current, which will be the voltage over the resistance. I'm assuming that the voltage of the capacitor at zero is zero volt. So we have a jump here of the current and the capacitor is being charged. And I'm assuming here that this process goes to completion. That is eventually C3 will be charged to V1. So now from energy and conservation of charge point of view, we can say the following. The energy that the source lost or delivered is V1 times Q. The energy gained by the capacitor is V1 squared, the final value of the voltage of the capacitor times C over two, which can be translated as V1 Q over two using this relationship of the capacitance. This is a linear capacitor. So subtracting from the loss, the gain, we see that there is a net loss now of CV1 square over two. That is half of the energy is lost. It's lost to this resistance, actually converted to heat. Again, I'm assuming no inductance and of course ideal components. So now to deal with various cases of the charging, discharging process of capacitors, voltage sources, etc. We can use an equivalent circuit of a charged capacitor, which will be very helpful. Now, if I have a capacitor which is charged to some value of a voltage VC1 at zero time, I can represent it for all practical purposes by the equivalent circuit that has a capacitor plus a voltage source in series from outside you cannot distinguish between these two. This is absolutely equivalent from the electrical point of view. So now let's have a look how we can use this model to examine this particular case that I've shown earlier. So we have two capacitors, each charged to a given voltage. And now using this model, I'm replacing this capacitor by a capacitor which is fully discharged in series with the voltage source, the same thing goes here. I am now combining these two voltage sources. Here it is. I am now combining these two capacitors. Here it is. So I have an equivalent capacitance with, with this value. 
Now, this is now exactly the same case that we have seen at the beginning. This is the very basic generic charging of a capacitor by a voltage source, only that this voltage source is the sum of these, which is in fact the difference in the voltages for these polarities. And this capacitor now is a combined capacitor, these two in series, which is C1, C2 over C1 plus C2. And here we got this result. So we can see that this model presentation can simplify very much the analysis and also it shows that all charging and discharging of capacitor are actually exactly the same process and then it's just a matter of the way the circuit is built. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps you can use it in the future. Thank you very much.